What is up, gents? 40k Dirtbags here. We won a RTT with Night Lords. I was impressed. Uh, I did not think that it could be done. But if you guys haven't noticed, we are trying almost every Legion on the channel. So if you guys are new to the channel, you like Night Lords, you like Chaos Space Marine, definitely hit the subscribe and definitely follow. Hit the little notification so these videos actually pop up for you guys. But there's going to be a Night Lords video battle report coming up for you. We actually just recorded it last night. But I wanted to make uh, another tournament video. I do this uh, all the time. Anytime I go to an RTT, we do pretty well. Uh, or we go to a GT, we take pictures of overhead camera. Uh, so that way you guys get to see the board, see the mission, kind of see where we go. And also tactics on how to get better at the game. So with Night Lords, I've ran them once before this tournament <laughs> uh and then i going into the tournament i posted a thing on youtube where there were five dark angels players at the 22 man tournament so basically 25 percent of the meta right now is dark angels so you guys should definitely prepare for that i don't think night lords are going to be the best for space marine meta uh they are very good in Xenos or other armies that uh, can fail morale and do the you know combat attrition tests that's kind of what i made this whole list uh for was trying to screw with people's morale and, and all that stuff so each game i'm going to go over uh what we did good what we learned what we what we could do better at uh and also who we played how they played how they could have got better so that way you can help the, kind of both sides of the coin so first part of the video we always like to go over the list so that way you guys can see what i have been running uh, i tweaked it a little bit in the battle report so it's a little bit different in the battle report but i'm going to be kind of doing a little bit more night lords because i've gotten a lot of feedback on facebook uh, of the night lord meta so basically the night lords uh on facebook there's a ton of you guys uh there's i posted one picture of it and i got 100 likes and and comments on, of just night lords so maybe night lords is the most popular faction black legion might be the best faction but night lords and even alpha legion are probably the two most popular factions so more like night lords might be coming up on the channel uh, i do like to thank all my patreons that we have four uh grandmaster patreons thank you guys you guys are fucking awesome all the other patreons you guys uh support this channel so much uh we're gonna just gonna keep growing grow the dirtbag nation we got a couple guys that i'm inter interested in like bringing on to the crew and doing uh, videos with so the the dirtbag nation is growing we got dice coming in probably in about 25 days from now uh we ordered 1700 custom uh, dirtbag dice uh, we have objective markers, which if you guys see in the pictures posted on Patreon, we're going to have objective markers, a lot of them from different uh, armies. So those are going to look pretty cool. But let's get into the video and go over the list. All right. So with Night Lords, what you get with them is you get minus two leadership within nine inches, which is huge. Um, so minus two inches. I want to make the list uh, kind of solely trying to reduce leadership as much as possible uh, and then morale you know, combat attrition tests. So you get minus two leadership. Also, you get minus one for combat attrition tests. So if you are failed the morale, one guy dies. Then if you roll the number of dice left in the unit, then you roll one, another guy dies. With Night Lords, if you roll one or two, they die. If they're already at half strength of the unit leader or unit, ones, twos, and threes, they die. <clears throat> so you can kind of see you keep stacking the combat attrition tests with Grey Knights, or not Grey Knights, wow, with Space Marines, they don't take any additional morale fails. So it's only on ones. Um, Black Legion, same thing, only on ones. Uh, so that's kind of like the, the tough part about Night Lords is it doesn't get around the they shall know no fear. But it definitely screws over every other Xeno army out there. So um, let's go over the list. Uh, oh, and there's one more thing that I always forget with Night Lords, and I... And I trying to remember i just need more reps with them but if you get their leadership down to a five or at half strength you get plus one to wound on anybody in melee with that unit so i always forget about that so they could actually be hitting a lot harder and wounding a lot more so you're basically going for a number of attacks ap um and just trying to get that plus one to wound on top of everything so here's a list guys a lot of you guys have been asking for it but it's it's i made it with another guy on discord he's been running this for a while now and i was like you know what that's that's pretty cool the only thing i don't have is the throne or the uh big chaos tower thingy uh he uses that for 
um, plus one CP, which I definitely have to go buy now. So here it is. We have the Demon Prince with wings. Now you bring in Demon Prince because he's already minus one uh, leadership if you're within, I think, six inches of him. So he's the same as like a spawn. So he's already bringing minus one leadership. So him in combat, you're already at minus three leadership. Lord of Terror, uh, that is needed for Night Lords. I didn't know this was a Warlord trait until Night Lords, so, because you don't really care about it thus, but I mean, honestly, if you put this on any Demon Prince with Night Lords, you're charging in and you're already at minus three leadership. Let's say you kill two, three guys in the unit. Now they're minus six leadership. So if they start at a 10, they go down to a four. So on a five or a six, they run away. If they start at an eight, they go down to a two. So on a three plus, they run away. But here's the kicker. You have to roll two dice for, for morale check and you drop the lowest. So almost always, not always, sorry. They have a more likely chance of failing morale because of that. And it's a six inch aura. Like it's six inches, it's not even in combat. It's six inches away. So if he's in like six inches of multiple people, you're doing it like all the freaking time. It is, it is insane. Um, <clears throat> So that's kind of why I put that on him. He also is Nurgle, uh, so he's minus one damage if it's strength six or strength 12. Uh, he can do the transhuman on himself. He can do the power for minus one to hit. Uh, but he also has the uh, relic where every time he hits, it automatically wounds and ignores phase caps or uh, any damage reductions, feel no pain, stuff like that. So he is a beat stick. <laughs> he did fairly well, you know, the entire time. Really, I brought him because of the range movement 12 minus one leadership on top of the night lords roll two dice drop the lowest and you count as being half strength already i forgot to mention that so you're half strength even if you only lost one guy so you're running on ones and twos and threes because of night lord that's fucking awesome so that's why i bring the demon prince with wings so if you guys want to try him he's freaking awesome this guy, Lord Disco, I really like the Disco. I love the model. I love just everything about him. He's he's got really cool uh, flamer. He's got the strats. Like he's quick. Uh, he's on a huge base. So this is the thing that I would change around about him. So in the next battle report, you guys will see what I'm going to run him as. But he's bringing one piece at a time. One piece at a time. It adds an additional uh, plus one to morale. Uh, minus one to combat attrition tests. So now you're running all ones, twos, threes, and fours. Uh, and he can consolidate any direction. So if he charges in, he can consolidate before he gets attacked, or he charges in and consolidates uh, into like another, you know, army or whatever. But he, at the end of the fight phase, he targets a unit within three inches that is still alive, and now they suffer minus one to uh, combat attrition tests. So it wasn't the best. It was cool. It was a great idea. Uh, it just it wasn't the best. It didn't really work <laughs> like I, I played a, a marine army and then i played uh two other armies the other army kind of ignored it and then the other army uh just they all died before i get to even do it so that's probably one thing that would change about it but it is pretty cool uh warlord trait <clears throat> uh, he's bringing marcus slanesh so that way when he charges in piles back three inches they can't attack or they can't consolidate or whatever but let's say they do charge him next turn, he's Slanesh, so then he'll be able to fight fast. That's kind of why I put him on Slanesh. You can heal him, you can do a five up field of pain on him, so it's 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 not bad. Uh, Master Possession, we brought him in here. Uh, Mutate Invigoration and Pact of Flesh, so basically you're gonna be able to give plus one strength or toughness to a Demonkin unit, um, or really any unit. And then if they're Demonkin, if you roll over a 10, you get both. Uh, Pact of Flesh, you get to heal D3 and bring a guy back. That is one of the best powers we have. Just being able to extend the range of a, of a charge for a possess unit uh, is just, it's it's so good. Uh, so I didn't bring Libor or anything. He's basically just the bare bone master possession. He's there for the warp locusts for our demons. So in this list, we have demons so that we can teleport a warp locust uh, demon unit uh, within six inches and they could do whatever they want to do. So he doesn't, he can't be marked for that. Or I think he has to be Mark of Slanesh, which it's up to you. It's your call. I didn't really have too many points left over. Cultist unit. I love cultists. They just do everything really good. I didn't look into like the free weapon weapon jet for the cultists, uh, but I definitely am going to start bringing free free weapons and trying to remember that what they have because those that extra flamer can come in handy. Uh, the extra you know 
uh, grenade launcher, whatever they can bring. Like that's that's definitely cool to look into. Legionnaires, uh, this one is bringing the Balfire Tomb with Prescient, so you can give plus one to attack uh, on anybody that's charging out. So that's definitely cool. It's an 18 inch cast. It goes off on a seven, so it kind of goes off a uh, pretty high cast. Honestly, anything that goes on a seven plus is pretty high to cast. But they uh, they kind of just sit back, shoot the last cannon if they need it. Um, that's kind of really all they do. Uh, Legionnaires here, we got the Mark of Corn. So I did need some combat, you know, in the backfield. So if anybody comes in the backfield, I at least have AP two weapons, you know, a bunch of attacks. Uh, they're plus one strength because the icon, the Demon Blade, I didn't know it was so fucking powerful. But the Demon Blade is AP three with Corn and then uh, two damage on sixes. They do mortal wounds. I think it's like strength five or six or something. Uh, it might be strength five, but, and then you bring the Tainted Chain Axe if you want. Uh, I didn't know that the blade was two damage. I thought it was one damage. So that's why I brought the Tainted Chain Axe. So I'll definitely bring the um, Power Fist or something else so that we have some oomph on top of it. So you could definitely bring two uh, weapons with the, uh, the champion. And then everything else just has uh, chain swords. So you can bring them outside rather than just have the extra attacks because I want to get them in melee. I want them to fail morale. I want them to, to be night lords. So that's kind of why I didn't bring any extra weapons on them. Master of Executions, I'm still up in the air about him. I don't have too many games with him. This is the first time I actually used him. I have the really cool model, the night lords uh, 30k model. Uh, it's He's looks freaking amazing. So he's my Master of Execution. I gave him Dirty Fighter, which I think is definitely one of the best... Uh, warlord traits um in <laughs> night lords obviously you want to bring it on somebody uh for him he consolidates or piles in six inches he has a heroic intervene for six inches so he can heroic intervene six inches cast dirty fighter from three inches away uh, and i gave him the mark of nurgle nurgle you can give him slanesh you can give him um uh zinch to ignore one uh save but i like nurgle because anything that's strength four uh is minus one to wound and then anything that's strength eight is minus one to wound so he a little harder to kind of wound uh as well as you can do transhuman on them so for one cp you can do transhuman um that's kind of why i, I like the market nurgle on him because he doesn't get any bonuses like for having a icon or anything on him so you just have to pick one that is going to make him more survivable or fight last or fight first <laughs> uh possessed but he has fight last so really like it you don't really need this unless possessed we have two units of possessed they are amazing in this list uh they Five attacks each, leader is six. They're also minus one if you're within six inches of them. So they have the same thing as the Demon Prince. So you're already minus three going into combat uh, and plus two to combat attrition tests. <clears throat> so they have a shit ton of attacks. They're strength five, they're toughness five. They have a five up in vault save and they're minus two, two damage. So they're speed nine, like sure. They do a ton of work with this list. You can bring one back, you can buff them up, you can do everything. So I think two to three units of possessed in the Night Lords list is going to be super, super needed. Uh, Rubric Marines is the first time I ran them. The guy on Discord, he's the one who kind of runs this list. He, they, they were fun. I used it the first time and I did shit with them. So then I started putting a reserve so they can walk on and just spray something to death. I used mine very defensively. So they kind of like walked on or, or kind of stayed that they weren't going to get, you know, demolished you have to be careful of guys that turn off uh, overwatch because they are uh, great with overwatching and killing shit but if you have like banshees coming into you you don't get any overwatch if they charge you through a ruin you don't get any overwatch if they're behind a building or a wall you don't get any overwatch you got to be careful with that if you're going to use these guys for that overwatch but they're the ones with the black room damnation for the minus one to wound uh and anything within 18 inches double peril or doubles peril <clears throat> uh they brought the warp time and then give themselves a four up in bone for the zinch power so they're just a really tanky hard-hitting flamer unit they just melt whatever the fuck they want to want to shoot d6 plus two for each guy so it's 96 plus 18 dice <laughs> they can <laughs> they can advance they can warp time and then they can flamer crazy 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 so that is a really good list. I might try that in more uh, more lists. Fast attack, we got the Raptors. They are there to be in deep strike, so that way that you can spend one CP, come down turn one for a Night Lord strat, and do an action. Uh, plus, they also have minus one leadership, so they're just all combat uh, Raptors. 
uh, and they're minus one leadership. So if they do get into combat, they're minus three leadership because the Night Lords. And if they happen to kill, you know, a couple and then live, you know, if one guy lives, they have to do morale minus two. So it's like it's pretty good. Um, but they're mainly there to do a deep strike, do an action, put a banner down, do whatever, and then probably spend one CP to go back in reserves. Uh, so they're, they're a cool 105 point unit. Can't do that with Warp Towns. So Warp Towns, they don't have minus one, which I don't understand. Uh, they're really over cost that I'd rather bring Possessed. Then we got the Allegiance uh, Patrol. So the Patrol, we brought the uh, Epitome. It's the little mirror chick from Slanesh. It has two powers. The first power, you 18 inch range, uh, I think closest visible unit, goes off on a seven. You roll um, 3d6 above their leadership. So whatever the leadership is at that time, so if you're already at you know, within six inches of them and they're minus two for night lords, minus one for a demon, minus one for um, a possessed being by, uh, they're basically minus four leadership. So if they're at leadership nine, they're now at leadership five. You roll three to six, anything over a five, uh, they take a mortal wound up to six. So it's just a cheeky little way to add more mortal wounds to leadership. And then the second spell you take is, uh, goes off on a seven, 18 inch range targetable visible, uh, you roll 6d6, and if you roll 5+, plus, they take a mortal wound. If you if that unit takes a mortal wound, they're minus 1 to the leadership. So you probably want to do that in vice versa order. You want to minus 1 to the leadership and then do the 3d6 cast, which I'm just realizing now I didn't do that because I wrote it on a card, and I kept doing, all right, spell 1, fail. Spell 2, passes. <laughs> so uh, make sure you're doing it in the opposite order that I said. Um, so that way you get it down to another minus one. So basically minus two for Night Lords, minus three for being a demon, minus four because of that spell, and then minus five because of uh, Raptors or Possessed or the Demon Prince. So they're already minus five leadership before you even get to attack anybody. Wow, it's fucking awesome. D 10 Demon Nets, they actually performed really well. Uh, they're quick, they come down out of Deep Strike, they have four attack space, AP two, uh, hitting on threes, strength four, like shit ton of attacks, guys. Uh, Nurglings, they're there for the pregame uh, advanced deploy. So you can block out other advanced deploys or you can camp an objective or if you take engage, they can be in one quarter, then you can hop in the other quarter so you get two points turn one or three if you can do the other quarter. So they're a cheeky little 60 point unit that I definitely like, uh, and especially if you play that mission where you don't get a CP unless you start on the pregame you know, objective. 100% uh, you bring these guys. So if you bring them, they're starting on the objective, you get a CP, you don't lose out on anything. So they're, they're a really good uh, unit. Then we got two units of fiends. Um, I liked the two units instead of the one unit. One unit of five or two units of, of three uh, because you're kind of using them as like little missiles. If they get into combat, they're going to die because they have a five up uh, uh, save. But I'm also using them for that one CP strat for the minus two to cast within 12 inches. 12 inches is ginormous on the tabletop so they can move 14 so you can start one on the table you can deep strike another one or start both on the table so they're behind a wall they move out 14 inches and then they charge pile in consolidate then you on their psychic phase if they're within you know 12 inches you spend one cp everything is minus two to cast such a good combo uh they also give you that easy uh minus one leadership minus one combat attrition test for being a demon for a huge part of the board because they have really long bases and then if you kind of charge with them sideways then you get a lot of threat range for that uh minuses leadership and minus combat attrition so that's the whole list with the demon and the possessed and the um demon prince in combat or really just the demon prince and a demon in combat with the unit you're minus three because the demon prince you're minus four because of the the demon so you're minus four leadership before you even attack if you do a power you're minus five uh, and then the combat attrition, uh, if you have the um, Disco Lord, you're minus one because of Night Lords, you're minus two because of the Demon Prince, because you count as being half strength, you're minus three because of the uh, the Demons, and then you're minus four because of the uh, Disco Lord uh, Flay Them Alive. So you're minus four combat attrition tests. Uh, <laughs> Holy shit, so they only stay on fives or sixes. It's kind of kind of crazy. So that is how I built the list. That's how, how I'm running it. And it was it worked, it worked well. Um I like having people roll morale and failing because like that feeling of rolling a morale test, it's so 
nerve wracking, especially like when I do it. So like when I roll my, my gray nuts and there's one guy left, I'm leadership, you know, eight or nine, I lost four guys. I go down to four or five. I need a six and I lose. Well, when you roll that six, you're like, fuck, there goes my entire plan for the turn. Uh, if you roll that one, you feel super excited, but with the demon print, you have to roll two. So it comes up in, in the second game. I'll, I'll go over kind of how I felt about it and how the opponent felt about it, but he rolled a one and then he rolled a six and it, it was just so bad but i'll talk about it in the video um so that was the list let me know if you guys have any comments i'm going to post in the link below but there are some things that at the end of the video i'm going to go over what i'll change um and then hopefully we'll uh learn a lot during the night lords battle reports so here we go Alrighty, so let's get into it uh first opponent Dark Angel player, new to the store, um, traveled with another buddy who actually has been playing there, another Chaos guy. Uh, but this guy was super fun to play. Uh, at the tournament, you guys saw, if you saw the the thing, it was five Dark Angels <laughs> out of 22 people. It was nuts. Of course, you're most likely going to get paired into a Dark Angels player round one, if not round two. Uh, so he ran the standard Dark Angels list. He has two units of Terminators. Uh, storm shields hammers two missiles in each squad he has the uh two three man units of bikes he had a proxy uh the two bikes um because he forgot them at home so he had three uh two three man units of melted bikes a couple shield veterans which i haven't seen in a while uh the caster uh ezekiel i think his name is azriel one of those two um three units of the no deep strike within 12 inches and apothecary uh, bike dude and a chaplain bike guy. So the standard Dark Angel list, all of them, even the Blade Guard are transhuman. Uh, they all have storm shields, so plus one of their save. Uh, it, it's 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 deadly, guys. So um, I knew I had to, I knew I had to beat it, right? So my Night Lords is, does not do well into Space Marines, especially with the leadership. But this is uh, the terrain setup for every single map. Uh, it's all two universes terrain, so we have two ruins two ruins uh two ruins in the center these ones down here are dense uh and then to the right we have forests and then over here we have kind of line of sight blocking terrain so every table set up the same way uh and this is the first mission the diagonal uh deployment now he put two units of guys in deep strike the two terminator units uh because he has his chaplain that could do plus two to charges out of deep strike uh, or just plus two charges in general. His cha his chapter master goes off on two, so his praise goes up on goes off on a two plus. He can bring a guy back, I think, for free. For like, <laughs> they just have so much bullshit. Uh, I don't get any of that stuff, so it's not fair. But um, we set up pretty uh, aggressively. We have the fiends on the board. We deep struck a unit of fiends up top and demonettes. Uh, we have the mirror and everything down here. All the characters are just kind of chilling out. And then uh, this is line of sight blocking the first floor. So, uh, and then this is line of sight blocking the first floor. That's new to alternate universes. So we're testing that out this this day and everybody loved it. So first line of sight for blocking, it's it's just so much easier to play it that way. We set up our uh, Nurglings in the center so that way we can stop the advanced deploy that he had. I think he put, he put his first advanced deploy over here. Uh, then I put as far spread out as I possibly can over here because you can't start within nine inches. So he had to put his guy right against the wall uh, over here. Um, and then everything else kind of stayed over here. I did start the uh, guys on the table just to kind of test it out because I wanted to, if he deep struck, I can spend two CP to uh, shoot them coming out of reserves from 12 inches away. So I wanted to test that out. Uh, so we started them on the table. And I wanted to kill these guys off the point turn one, which I kind of messed up, which we'll get into. So that was his deployment, kind of evenly spread. And that was my deployment. Just wanted to get up against the walls as much as possible because I am a melee army. Uh, and then turn one this is where we ended up so we advanced and i think warp timed the guys to get on the objective over here uh and just kind of teased that he can come out we did uh cast a psychic power from our mirror into the one guy over here and killed him which was a complete accident i should not have killed him because if i kept him on the on the point i could have just flamered the shit out of him which was so much better uh i think i got three guys on line of sight with the rest of the unit. I killed two more, let, leaving two guys left. He failed his morale, uh, and then he rolled a one. <laughs> so the other two guys just ran away. Either way, they would have lived, but luckily we killed him. We put four up in Vuln Save on the Warp Talon guys on the bottom. 
uh, Demon Prince, Master of Execution, and all the characters are kind of just chilling out in the bottom. We spent one CP to get the Raptors down turn one to put a banner on the center objective. And then turn one, we ran our Fiends up to here, charged this unit just to kind of get in his backfield. And these guys uh, moved up and charged as well into this uh, corner over here, just to kind of keep them from coming into my zone. So good job, Nurglings. Good job, Fiends. Uh, he didn't kill any of the Fiends back. But then we could spend one CP to do minus two leadership uh, on his Psychic phase. So that was the kind of the goal of the Fiends. That's why I wanted to use them today, just abuse the Psychers. Uh, we left off with one CP. He has three. And then we moved up everybody into the corner over here. So we took banners, uh, turn one, obviously, banner, banner, banner. And then I think we took kill shit and engage. I think that's that's what we took in this uh, in this mission. So that was my turn, pretty good turn one. Uh, kind of kept him in his zone, uh, couldn't really move out. His turn one, he then moves everybody up, uh, shoots his melted guys at, at the fiends, charges these guys. This guy fell back, so he did lose one point of oath. These guys moved up and finished off the rest of the fiends just to get some uh, uh, movement. And I think he stole the center objective from me because he they were obsec or he made them obsec. Um, so he he took uh, the the space marine secondary where you have to take over objective. So that was my fault. Uh, I didn't think he can get to the center, but he did. So he got four points for the uh, Space Marine one. Everything else kind of just stayed back and waited. And I know that this is just getting juicy right here because I want to just move up and kill everything off this zone over here. So then on my turn two, we moved and ran everybody up to the top here to kill the rest of the Melted Dudes. Uh, he had his... Apoth his uh, uh, character in the back here i killed one bike which left him to two bikes so then i was able to shoot his character because he wasn't character protected so i wanted to put all the flames in the character which i think we got one two three four five six six guys in range of his character we shot the rest at, at these guys but the six flamers took him down to one wound so left him on one wound if i would have killed his chaplain on turn two it would have stopped his deep strikes uh from getting into me and it would have been so much easier so all the other characters kind of took over the center we moved the possess out we moved the demonettes out from deep strike to be within six inches of the of the warp locust raptors then all moved up to get onto the uh, objective to put another banner down um because he, he got two on the point that's what stole it. He didn't, he didn't have OPSEC. He had two, two people on the point, which stole it. So I put all the people on the points so that way he couldn't steal it back. These guys uh, kept doing their job. They kept the banners out. The fiends, um, I believe, deep struck over here in the ruins, just kind of wait a turn. Uh, and then these guys moved up. So I want to get everybody onto these this unit to try and kill this unit and take another hard-hitting unit off the table. Uh, everything else kind of just died over here. So... Everything charged. Um, I didn't want to give him this point again, so I kind of just left it alone so he didn't get the four points again from taking it over. Uh, we made the charge. We kill, We made the charge over here to try and pile into the bikes. So it's called slingshot. So you charge in, like an easier charge, like a five or six, and then you slingshot your guys to try and tag up other units at the top. And that's what we were trying to do with the melted guys over here. Then we got a unit of one, two, three, four, five in there, one, two, three in that unit. The demonettes got in, the... the uh, this guy got in, the Disco Lord got in, and the other dude failed. So he's just kind of chilling behind here to try and heroic intervene next turn. And, uh, and yeah, that was, that was the charge phase. So we we killed this whole unit. Uh, he did a couple wounds to my Demon Prince, got it down to five. Uh, and that was that was that unit. So, hey, he needs a big turn too. So he deep strikes both uh, Terminator units. Uh, he moves this unit up here after realizing that he can't make that charge. So he moves the, the he deep strikes a unit of Terminators up here. He deep struck the other unit down here, even though even though I could have um, done the uh, where he deep strikes within twelve, and then I can spend two CP to shoot. That's a Zinch secondary or a Zinch strat, but I didn't want to waste the strat because he still has one, two, three. Four, four terminators in cover and ap2 with the storm shield takes him down to a two up save so it wasn't really worth the two cp so i didn't do it see i had two cp over here but we saved it for an interrupt uh so he did it anyway he then failed his two plus to get a two plus uh to charges so 
That's kind of what I needed. So he fit, failed his two of, he rolled a one. Uh, so, he, so he needs a nine to get the charges off for his Terminators. On a seven, he would have just wiped out this unit. But on a nine, it's harder to make that charge. So he failed it, definitely helped out. Um, he put nine inches away from this one character, nine inches away from this other character, nine inches away from a unit. So he gets to kind of choose who he's uh, targeting with all of his shots because he's not character protected. He is, but he's closer, so he's able to shoot it, shoot it. So this is where he deep struck the Terminators. So he failed the charge. The Apothecary ran up to here. Um, the other dude is right here. And these guys failed their charge right here, but they made their charge. <laughs> so they came in and just nuked my squad uh, pretty easily. Uh, I have a unit, uh, two men possessed left, five, four possessed over here. Um, and these fiends are just waiting to get out of the building. Uh, all I have left is my characters, two demonettes, the mirror, which got down to two wounds because he did shoot a crack missile into it. He shot a crack missile into this and did, I think, two wound or one wound to him. Rerolled it, did one wound. <clears throat> um, and yeah, so at this point, I'm like, all right, I'm up on primary. I have pretty good secondaries going, so I'm going to just ignore the Terminators. Uh, so I'm going to kill as much shit as I possibly can and ignore the Terminators. So I'm going to try and keep them to like a four point primary. So possess move up. We spend one CP to fall back and charge. So they fall back, kill Ezekiel on the point, kill these guys, the obsec on the point. So that way I can uh, steal the back home objective. Um, fiends move up, finish off the obsec over here characters move up and try and kill the other two characters over here. So basically this turn we kill one character, two character, uh, three character, take off the rest of his OPSEC and all he has left are the two Terminator units. And I think that's it. So basically we're just moving up, you know, slowly but surely doing the Night Lord shit, making people, you know, fail morale, all that fun stuff. And now all he has left is Terminators. Yeah, so this is basically the end of the game at this point. He's got a unit of Terminators here, unit of Terminators here, uh, and this guy is kind of just chilling right here in the center. They don't take morale checks, which I didn't know that this unit has as well. So Night Lords is just not good into Dark Angels with morale checks. You have to play around them. You have to try and play for primary, stop his primary, uh, and get as many secondary points as possible, which obviously is every single game. So this is the end of the game right here. We finished off with 99. So really 89 because we don't count pain score till the end, but we had 89 to 39 or 99 to 39. He had uh, 4, 4, 4 for primary. So 12, 3, 3, 3 for tertiary. Uh, shock assault, I think that's what it was, the one that he got four points for. So eight for shock, shock assault, six for oats, uh, and retrieve for four. So that was his uh, his secondaries. Ours were banners. We got maxed out on banners. Engaged, we missed out on one point. Uh, no prisoners, I think we maxed out because we essentially would have tabled everything. Uh, primary, 12 on turn two, 12 on turn three. Uh, then we basically would have maxed out primary right there. So without him having any characters left, we kind of just talked out the last two turns and this is what we found wound up with. So 99 to 39, game one. Good start for Night Lords uh, going into round too. So I was super pumped taking out the, the first Dark Angel player. Okay, so remember I told you guys ahead of time that there is one game, one game that, uh, all right, so this game was against another Chaos Sp uh, Space Marine player, very, very good player, knows his shit, uh, has been playing the army for a very long time, and he ran Word Bears, which I think is one of the best armies in Chaos Space Marines, and after seeing this guy play it, scary very very scary so when you guys are playing a game and it's essentially a dice game you should never complain about dice right so it's law of averages statistics uh luck you know it, it's, it's all just law of averages it's literally all dice is so anytime you're playing a game and you just you, you you don't like the dice or the way it's going or whatever it may be like yes it, some games it's like fuck i didn't roll anything good or some games it's like wow i rolled amazing so you can have your opponent agree like yes you, you did roll like shit and it definitely affected you know that game or that charge or that whatever this game huge into that right so there was one roll that kind of just like all right 
game over, right? And we'll get into that. But I just wanted to give that warning where uh, if I would have would have recorded this game, it would have been a very controversial type game to watch. All right. So again, opponent was very good, uh, very competitive, uh, just dominated the fucking uh, scene that he came from and his list I loved. All right. So um, this is his uh, deployment. This is my deployment, his list. And I almost rem remember it in the back of my hand. Ready? It's two rubric units uh, with flamers. He reserved one of them. He had the Nurgle Demon Prince. He had two Master Possession Zinch. He had a Master of Execution Zinch. Um, he had three man unit of uh, Obliterators, two Legionnaire units, I believe, two or three Legionnaire units, two Cultist units, which his Cultists look amazing. They were in uh, like vials. Uh, he put them like in like vile floating alien looking things so they were really cool he had two units of uh of those guys <clears throat> and uh venom crawler uh, obviously because he's running world bears and i think he had a i don't know i don't think he had a master uh or dark apostle because you don't really need one because he had a full 10-man brick of uh possessed as well which were super well painted cool conversion all that stuff so that was his list uh again he had a unit of rubrics and i believe no just rubrics and reserves so this list is again super scary uh this is my deployment uh it's pretty like everything hide as much as i can nurglings were up here we use this as a six inch thing so six inch back can't really say six inch back six inch or this down six so it's like a, a a u six inch u and then same thing on my side it's like the six inch u so that's the outline we used for the line of state blocking um yeah so i had turn one i believe no he had turn one okay so he went first didn't really do much because they were both hiding uh and he's got a melee army a little bit of shooting he's got a lot more shooting than i do but he's got a melee army with shooting i have a melee army with no shooting so he didn't want to come out to the center because we would just fight each other uh but his cultures basically ran up the side ran up the side down here um yeah, and then I, I got line of sight on one of the uh, the cultists down here with the flamer. So we flamed some of them, left three of them. Uh, he then was able to move out and put a, a banner down on this objective. Uh, I put a banner on the home objective, and then he uh, ran up his cultists over here. So uh, at the end of my turn, this is the end of my turn one. So the end of turn one, uh, I deep struck my dudes down here. Yeah, so the, the end of my turn, sorry, the end of my turn, I deep struck down here, uh, put a banner. Then on his turn, he moved up uh, on the objective, took the objective back over, uh, and I think he put a banner down on this objective. I ran my fiends into this building. I spread out my nerglings over here, uh, and then he started measuring out over here to bring on his, um, his rubric marines. So his rubric marines came on over here uh, outside of nine inches and he was able to flamer easily off the nurglings and he flamered and did uh killed one fiend and left the other fiend on three wounds so he couldn't get full line of sight with you know most of the fiends just because of the six inch uh, wall so we gave him one two i think three or four onto the fiends and then the rest were onto the nurglings and just obviously destroyed the nurglings so um at this point, cultists were still moving forward. The possessed now are up top, so we can see them. They're one inch away from the wall. Uh, these guys move over, and they just obliterated my raptors. Like, they're just gone. Um, these guys spread out now. He did leave a, a, a gap right here, so because I put my uh, dudes in reserve as well, the rubrics. So he left the gap right here, and again, he's a good player. So he started moving back. Like he left his demon prince right here, but he started moving his his dudes back so that way I couldn't get within nine inches of the demon prince because they were they were close. Like you saw before, they were close right here to to kind of take this from me. But then he started spreading them out again because that was smart because they would have literally just walked on right here and just blew up uh, the demon prince with all the flamers. So that would have been cool. But again, he's a good player, so he brought everybody back. These guys again moved over uh, and just nuked my uh, raptor squad. 
So with all these uh, buffs out, he gives he gives them uh, like plus one toughness, plus one strength, four up uh, invuln save to demons, uh, four up invuln save to these guys. Um, what else does he give? I think he has like a warlord trait where he can uh, give out strength or toughness to a demon unit. So the whole list is really built around the demons, obviously, uh, and the flamer is just nuking off the side of everything else. So this unit is just super tanky in the middle. Super scary, guys. Like the <laughs> Super, super scary. Uh, my turn, right? So the goal is I have to take this objective back. I have to clear out this fucking chaff over here. Uh, and I have to tie up like as much as I can. I have to bait him out. That's my goal is I have to bait him out because we're literally not fighting over the center yet. Usually most people kind of run out to the center and be like, all right, come at me. Nobody's doing that right now. It's really just fighting on the sides. He's slowly creeping to the center, but he's not there yet. So I'm like, all right, I have to bait him. So, we, so let's bait him. <laughs> we bait them so we get uh the fiends right uh they charge the cultists um because i didn't want to charge the flamers because he would just flame the shit out of me so we charge the cultists kill all but two cultists uh and then we tie up the uh rubrics and he gets a couple attacks on me i think he kills one of the fiends he leaves one fiend with two or three wounds um and then everything else kind of scoots up. So we get a banner on the center objective for uh, with this legionnaire because he's obsec, goes to the center. We move up my uh, possessed into the center. We gave him plus one toughness, I believe. Uh, and then all the characters move up. Now this is the goal with this list is they move up as a, as a group because they all help each other buff. So the one gives plus one to uh, combat attrition test. The other one gives the roll two dice drop the lowest plus one, minus one leadership, which is the demon prince. Uh, the other one has a fight last ability, which I gave him a little bit of room right here. So that way he can move out six inches and give somebody fight last if he comes in. So I put him right there so that way he can kind of protect this and hopefully get, get up here and protect this. So he, he has that little, right this guy can consolidate three inches after he attacks so i left a little room down here so that way if he does get into me i can fight and then move three inches back uh and the demon prince had to give him room the mirror moved up and did i think a spell to this guy but i, I failed twice because i need a seven uh and then everything else is back here waiting for the second wave demonettes uh deep struck in the building over here uh, and I think they put up a banner again. So they're obsec and they put up a banner. So that way, if he does get on the point, at least I still have some demonettes left. And, uh, oh, and my fucking dude's 252 point unit down here came on and flamer the shit out of these two, these three cultists. <laughs> so they died banner still up. I don't have this point yet. So next turn I have to get up and either put a banner down or just kind of wait for them for him to come to me. So at this point, it's kind of just waiting to see what he does. This is the reactive point of the tournament or of the of the game so he's like all right i'm gonna commit so he puts everything out all these guys moves them out has like a seven or eight inch charge onto this legionnaire uh and we're talking and i'm like i do i can i can give you a fight last so we're seeing if it's worth it or not for him to come in uh obliterators may, raiders move up i ask him why he runs a three-man unit of obliterators because in word bearers they get a full reroll to hit they don't have any negatives to hit and they're basically just power fists like without the negative um so they hit really really hard uh and they hit reliably so really smart five up in vuln save four up with the master possession uh master of execution is this guy right here so i thought he was a master of possession but he's master of execution so i kind of messed that up throughout the game these two are the master of possessions and then what else did he do he basically smited uh these guys off the off the board um and then he failed his warp time so he couldn't get on onto the objective uh, and he couldn't really get as many onto the flamer my demonettes as he could so that helped me for him not to get in on the objective as well as not being able to flamer so i really needed to stop the warp time i think i spent one cp just to, to the 12 inch minus two to cast bubble that's really what helped um and i had a deny from my corn uh, which I think failed, and then I had to deny from the Demon Prince, trying to cast over here. All right, so this is him Him committing. Uh, he's moving everybody up. He wants to charge the Oblitz in. I can't get my Master of Execution. We measure it out to get to the Oblit if he, if he lands right here, one inch away. So I can't move six inches around and get into combat with him, so it has to be this way. So I told him I can get over this way six inches and try and fight last his Possessed. So this is the thing, he makes the charge, 
All right, so a lot happened in this turn. He makes the charge with this unit, puts them all about right here. Then he makes the charge with this unit to put them right here. I uh, have an option to move up and make the possessed fight last. But in my head, if I make them fight last and get into combat with them, I don't have enough to kill that unit. So he can then pile into my master of execution and just nuke my master of execution. So I'm like, all right, you can kill my legionnaires, right? 105 points, kill them. Then I at least I have something to combat next turn to try and deal with your possessed. So that was my going on in my head is yes, I can make them fight last, but then I die. Like there's really no point. I'd rather wait a turn, then move up, get some attacks, and make that unit fight last. So that that was that was my mindset going into uh, him charging my unit. All right, so that was him getting into combat, and then I was like, all right, do I fight last? Do I f and not? All right, so let's get into what happened when he charged in his possessed, and then he charged in with his um, uh, obliterators. I he fought with his possessed first. I think he failed this charge up here, or he, he made the charge. Yes, so he makes the charge, and this is what happened. All right, sorry, I was trying to remember. So he makes the charge up here, right? He makes the charge with his possessed. He makes the charge with his obliterators. I still have a big second wave coming. So if he kills whatever is in front of him, it's fine. It's it's that's that's what what he does, right? So he kills my legionnaires. He kills, I interrupt. So I interrupt with my demonette. And the reason because I'm going for primary over killing shit, right? So he doesn't get anything for getting the center objective. He doesn't, he takes down my banner, but who, who cares? Um, I need to keep my banner up and keep this primary up here. So I interrupt with my demonettes. And when I interrupt with my demonettes, they all pile in and do like 40 fucking attacks. Uh, hitting on threes, wounding on fours, because it's strength four, toughness four, uh, and AP two. So just nuke all but like three or four uh, of the of the Thousand Suns um, blob, right? And then down here, this is what kind of changed his, his whole mindset with, with this unit and, and whatever. So uh, my uh, possessed, I think two or three lived. I pile it in to get into combat with his possessed. And then I tacked 15 times, 16 times into his possessed, killing one. Um, it's minus one to wound on the possessed because of the relic. It, he has a four up in bone save. Uh, minus or toughness six or seven, he made him uh, with the four up in So he's got all that. So I kill one possessed and I think I leave one with, I don't know, one wound left. So I only killed one. Now, since you are uh leadership nine on the possessed you go down to leadership seven on the possessed and then you go down to leadership six because of the of my possessed so your leadership six now since i killed one guy your leadership five all right so i killed one guy your leadership five he then rolls a dice and i think he rolls a one or something so he's fine then I'm like, oh wait, there is a uh, warlord trait that I have, which you have to roll two dice, Lord of Terror. So he rolls two dice, and guess what his second dice is? A fucking six. So he rolls a six. Fuck, right? Next guy dies. He then rolls eight more dice because there's eight more dudes left in the squad. Rolls eight dice. Three more ones. Three guys die. So he technically runs on a one and a two because uh, of the warlord trait. So it counts as being half. So ones and twos. And then my night lord, you run on threes. So he had the icon on the possessed, so he should have ran on ones and twos. I didn't keep track. I think he only ran on ones. He might have ran on twos if he rolled any. We didn't really pay attention to that. But he, he had three more guys run away. So... He, he lost five guys to me only killing one guy. And at that point, it was, it was kind of over. He didn't, he didn't really like that very much. Uh, I felt bad. We kind of just talked, you know, most of the game about that role and, and stuff like that. He takes off his leader model, you know, because it was closer over here. He left this guy, I think, or whatever. Uh, and when you remove the leader model, the, the relic also goes with it. So we didn't keep that 
on whatever. So the whole unit would have died in my fight back. So my turn after that, I moved up everybody. The cultist uh, moved up, put a banner down. The execute, the disco lord moved up. The fiends uh, got deep struck from six inches of my uh, master possession. Mirror moved up. Possessed moved up, Demon Prince moved up, Master Everything. So everybody moved up and finished off uh, the Obliterators and that unit of Possessed. Uh, so it would have been easier if he didn't do the minus one uh, to wound. Um, and it would have been easier if I remembered the, minus, the plus one to wound for Night Lords. But I forgot it almost all three games. So that was my bad. But then I, I go back and I'm like, wait, how's that guy still alive? Because you lost your, your dude. He's like, oh, fuck. You're right. I'm like, yeah, so, well, shit. So uh, he's like, all right, I feel bad. I was like, I feel bad too. This He shouldn't be there. He's like, I know, let's four up it. I'm like, whatever. So he four is up it. He rolls a three. That guy then gets taken off the table. So we killed the full unit of fully buffed up possessed um, in, one, in basically one full battle round because he rolled a six with the Lord of Terror, you know, ran away, rolled three ones, ran away, and then that unit basically was just got obliterated um we made uh the the dudes fight last over here uh and then the possessed kind of just you know died or we made the possessed fight last and then we killed the, the it doesn't matter we killed them down here on the bottom these guys moved up and put a banner down on, on the bottom flank uh these guys up here uh the five possessed they i think they spent one cp to fall back and then i made a guy right here and then made that charge a lot easier. Uh, the demons, demoness just fell back because they didn't want to stay in combat. The cultists scooted up to try and get you know within both objectives. My legionnaires are doing their job, just holding the back back flank, um, and that's it. So basically, I got the bottom corner, I got the top corner, and I got the center pretty reliably right now. And at this point, he just yeah, you know, it's all about the rolls, all that stuff. So it was just it was just. <laughs> kind of all downhill from here. So he has uh, still characters left. He's got his Demon Prince on the back here. He's got two Legionnaire units uh, in the back, and I think he had a five-man unit of Flamers on the top here. So after this, uh, he moves everybody out. So he moves his uh, Execution dude out. He moves his uh, Demon Prince up. He has a Relic where he gets plus two movement, plus two strength, plus two, all that stuff. Super deadly. Uh, flies out, charges... Uh, whatever's left in the center he took assassinate so he kills my master of execution uh his master of execution did like eight mortal wounds to my uh, mirror dude which reminded me that i have a two up mortal wound save with my mirror guy so he lives on two wounds it was awesome like that's basically what he's made to do is take mortal wounds uh so he lives on two wounds the demonettes uh move up get some charge off the possessed move up from over here i make another one get the charge off i was a dumbass I'm like all right i'm gonna charge multi-charge your uh demon prince and this unit right here forgetting that he has fucking flamers so of course he spends one cp flamers off two of my possessed before they even get into combat that was so dumb on my part uh so i charge in uh do a bunch of wounds kill whatever uh this guy's moving up to try and get in the fight i kill his massive execution after he uh you know fights with my dude and I killed his Demon Prince with my Demon Prince. So my Demon Prince got to fight before his, uh, did a shit ton of damage, um, and that's it. So these guys started moving out because the banner's on the objective, they're doing their job, they, they move out, they advance. I fail my warp time or else I would have fucking just moved up six more inches and just flamed the shit out of his Demon Prince, but I failed. <sighs> All right, so his massive execution is dead, his Demon Prince is dead. These guys are stuck in combat. Venno Crawler is moving over here. I'm trying to get my guys behind the building uh, on this objective. He still has two casters over here and the Legionnaire squad over here. So, um, Fiends are still alive. Two, this guy's left on two wounds, five wounds. Uh, Demonettes are still kind of chilling. And then this is kind of wrapping up the game. So, um, Flamers moved up. I think they advanced again, so they moved up, killed off the rest of his uh, backfield objective, stole the objective. Two characters left over here. I kind of just ignore them because I don't have to kill them. I didn't take assassinate. I was trying to get engaged. Um, <laughs> these guys uh, fall back. They, they just kind of stay back there. Uh, everything else kind of comes back over here. He killed my uh, mirror, all, and he killed, I think, my demon prince. So everything is basically dead besides my master of possession, the warp time 
rubric marines, couple cultists, legionnaires, uh, and that's it. So everything else is basically dead. Yeah, so that, that was the final thing. We got 80 points even to his 44 points. I kept him to four uh, for primary like the entire game. I had eight, eight, 12, 12, two on tertiary the entire game. We had 10 for long war. Um, I guess I, I, I could have taken the Night Lords one, but again, it's, I don't know. I, I, I didn't test it like all, 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 uh, all week. So engage, uh, I got 10. So I got two on every single, uh, turn, uh, banners. I got 15. So 15 for banners, 10 for engage and 10 for long war. Not, not bad for the secondaries, 45 mainly for, for the primary, his primary, we kept it to 16. Uh, secondary was four. So 20 assassinate. He got 12 grind. He took cause his list is made around grind. Uh, he only got, I think six we gave him. Uh, and then banners, he got two, three, four, five, six. So six for banners. So he wound up with 44 and we had 80. So it was pretty good, um, finishing up with this, this, uh, matchup. And again, we don't do pain scores till the end, but what I, this is just so stressful. Cause like throughout the entire game, it was just about rolling dice and, uh, me hitting, I guess a lot or not hitting a lot. And then me just start messing around with the opponent saying, Oh my God, you hit so many times and all that stuff. But at the end of it, it just came down to really that one dice roll of him rolling a six and it kind of being like over. So there are going to be some games like that, that you guys see, uh, on yourself and on the opponent. And you really either have to capitalize it, capitalize on it or try and play around it. So yes, you failed and all that stuff, but can you come back from it can you still get primary still get secondary still focus on the game rather than just completely saying all right i'm done game over because this game is mental um you do have to stay with it and be competitive you have to know that it is a dice game and it is going to go your way or not your way half the time so that is my tidbit about this game is you can't let one dice roll or one thing really determine your mindset, not just the game, the game could be fucked, but your mindset on how to keep in the game or not. Cause there's a lot of people that you're going to play. Some people you're going to see are just, holy shit. It's all about the dice and if they're good or not, or the very, very top competitive players in the world that know it's a dice game and play their game to their strengths and focus on primary and secondary points. So that was my tidbit about the game. Uh, very, very, very good close game. Again, very good a player uh, and very competitive player. So let's get into our last game. Going into the last game, there were one, two, three, four, five, five undefeated players. Uh, and there was two dark angels, a guard, myself, uh, and a, uh, Botan player. So those are the ones going in. I got the Eldar player. So I actually got the pair down going into the last game. If I played Brian, who is the dark elder player, uh, he's the one who I just posted a video for great gray Knights versus dark angels. If you want to go check that out, not dark, hard dollar, dark angels. He's a dark angel player. Uh, him, I probably would have lost to the guard player. I haven't played with night Lord yet. That would have been a really fun game, but he's Jesse. He's the guy who, uh, won the tournament beat me by three points, but, uh, he, I played at the GT with my chaos space Marines. So he's a very good player as well. And then the other two player, um, I didn't really watch or know what was going on, but those two played each other. So if I would have played one of those two, it would have been like such a close mindset game. This game was against Eldar. So I played this live uh, for you guys coming up in the next video. So you guys get to see similar. It's the same army, Eldari, but it's a different list versus Night Lords. So you get to see how, kind of how Night Lords are live on the tabletop. But let's get into this game. So he ran uh, Eldar. He brought uh, two units of the um, really hard hitting uh, jet bike dudes. He has got a jet bike on the uh, Farseer on jet bike. He's got uh, Farseers walking. He's got a couple uh, Banshees. He's got the Viper. He's got Avatar. He's got the Transport. He's got these dudes, which are insane. Um, he's got a couple of uh, Dire Avengers, I think they're called. Just shooty boys. Uh, and the guy who casts two or three times on foot. What else? Um, I think that was his list. So his list was kind of just a fun list. It's not super competitive, but it is 
still Eldari. And Eldari are fast, they're quick, they have great secondary, or they have great options with just killing shit. So I played Eldari enough to kind of know what to look out for and really Banshees are the ones I have to look out for because they make you fight last. Avatar, I feel like I can, I can kill pretty reliably, uh, but he does hit like a fucking truck. Um, and these guys, if I can stop them from getting their charge off and get charge them first or shoot them off the table, that is kind of my mindset going into this game. Okay, so uh, this is the mission. We did the mission where you have to kind of go sideways. It's the one where there's uh, you don't get a CP unless you start on the objective, which we don't usually play this mission just because of that. You don't get a CP, but I actually bring the demon, the Nurglings specifically for this uh, mission. So if we do happen to play this mission, I'm not losing out on a CP every single uh, you know turn. So if you're playing like Alpha Legion or something like that, you don't have to worry about it because you have the pregame move. If you're playing um, Night Lords or anybody that you bring, bring demons with, try and always get that Nurgle unit in there uh, just for this mission specifically. So we're able to start on the objective. He went first. Uh, I went second again <laughs> throughout the tournament. Uh, I put all my guys uh, in this building. Um, we have the massive possession so we can do the the uh, locust and kind of get the deep strikes. We put uh, another fiend unit on the table over here. We kept the demonettes off the table. Uh, everything else kind of castled up in this building. We have our um, characters are uh possessed uh, and i think a legionnaire unit is in that side this is a great mission for uh banners so i think we took banners we took uh engage uh, and then we also took i think kill shit on this one or assassin i think we took assassinate against eldar i always take assassinate it seems to be pretty well um but i'll, I'll let you know it's going to be posted up above my head soon um so with this one he kind of moves up everybody cautiously he moves uh his bikes as far forward as possible he took behind enemy lines so he wants to get uh behind my lines as soon as possible i try and block out the backfield he put in reserves the big guys with the guns uh the robot dudes um and i think a dire avenger unit in reserves so after his movement turn one wasn't super uh you know didn't uh, not a lot happened uh, sorry that was a shot on what was in my deployment zone and over here okay so after turn one uh, i moves everybody up uh kind of to here i move everybody up so he moves this transport up with the banshees inside his dive his uh troops get on the objective uh these guys get on the objective and do the secondary these guys scoot it up to here and everybody else kind of like stayed in the back uh, corner. I can't see past this because it's a uh, line of sight blocking. And uh, his one Viper got over to here to try and get behind enemy lines. Everything else kind of stayed back. My turn, I move my Fiends up to try and get the charge off and block him from coming into my zone. So my, my thought was to charge in, tie up the tank, uh, pile in so that way I can spread him out sideways to get a long line on the fiends so that way his tank is tied up in combat and his guys getting out of the tank can't go past my fiends that's that's kind of the goal here so his banshees are scary so they can't run through shit so they have to go around so if I put my my guys lined up from the edge of the table and go around this way he has to run around the top of my fiends to get into my uh, zone so that was the the mindset of tying the tank up the Nurglings charging to try and kill the uh, the dudes over here was kind of that goal to try and kill them, steal the objective. Uh, and then I turn one brought these guys on for one CP to flamer the shit out of the, uh, the Raptor. This guy moved up uh, to get 18 inches. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my dog. And we're back. Okay. So this guy moved up to be within 18 inches of this bike unit that he put on the on the side here i think we killed two of them with the flamer flamers so freaking go with the disco lord uh the other flamers just shot the shit out of this uh viper and killed the viper uh everything else kind of stayed one inch away from the wall uh over here fiends moved up uh now i did leave a little uh room back here for his guys to walk on from reserves turn two so I ran my fiends back to the corner to block out the back corner because I don't want people to come in my back corner. Um, everything else kind of scooted up and just stayed in combat right here. Nurgle, Nurgling has made their charge. Everything else came out here. We put a banner on this objective. We put a banner out with the cultist that fell down right here. So we got banner, 
banner, banner, and we made our charge on the bottom here. So this is after my turn uh, two, my turn one. This is after my turn one. Yeah, so after my turn one, we made that charge, and this is what I was talking about. So the fiends are blocking this way because you can't walk past uh, one inch of my fiend uh, and get off the backfield, so we can't come this way. So he has to come this way, around. He can't run through unless he's charging. So uh, they did their job. Avatar starting to move up. Nurglings took over this objective. Uh, so we kept him to, I think this is a hold one, hold two. But we kept him to these two objectives. These guys moved up and he was deciding, all right, do I charge the Disco Lord? Uh, which I'm like, all right, he has a flamer. Or do I charge the uh, the guys in the backings? And I'm like, oh, yeah, they have flamers. And he's like, fuck. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, and I have the fight last dude right here. So no matter who he charges in, he's going to be able to pile in six inches or consolidate heroic intervene, whatever it's called, six inches and then make fight last. So whatever he does in this corner is just not good at all. So he decides to run back and kill my Nurglings. So instead of charging that way, he then moves up and, and kills the, the Nurglings. Um, and that was about it for my turn. So after his turn, this is the end of his turn uh, two. He basically flew the, the tank over my fiends, fall back, fell over my fiends to get into my table quarter so that way he can get the points for buying enemy lines. Uh, we then surrounded his tank with my cultist. My cultist then moved back and charged the tank to try and surround it. And then I charged the tank with my uh, possessed because I want to try and surround the tank so that way if the tank uh, dies, he then has to spend uh, for a desperate breakout, which then he fails on, on a one or two. So that was kind of my goal, which then he had a unit of 10, I believe, two, four. So he's six left on the uh, Banshees. A couple of them ran. Um, so that's kind of what happened down here. Uh, but then the Banshees are going to just nuke me, right? So this guy ran out uh, the Master Possession to get Warp Locus, so that way the Demonettes can come down within six inches. When they came down within six inches, they have to be outside of six of any enemy units. So they uh, got the charge off on the guys behind this wall. I think it was like a seven or eight inch charge. So they came down within six inches, made the charge, uh, and then kind of took this objective over here because their OPSEC only has one, two, three, four, five, six on this objective. So that was that was a great play. And then up here, we now have to try and commit on the avatar. So we ran up our master of executions uh, somewhere over here. Uh, he's right in the, in the center. So we ran him up just so that way he can he can make the avatar fight last. These guys made the charge. We took him down to six. Uh, we took six wounds off him. The nurgling somehow fucking lived uh, with minus one to hit. Uh, the disco lord moved up. Uh, Dean Prince moved up, so basically all my characters are still kind of running forward like they have been. These guys are moving up. I failed warp time again, so they're kind of stuck in the backfield. Mirror is kind of chilling and blocking out the backfield. The Fiends, like I said, ran back to block him from walking into my deployment zone. Uh, and this side I have pretty much down over here, so we can't really walk in too close on this side of the table. So what he's got left is a couple characters. He's got a character here, character there, uh, two troop units, the Avatar, um, the Banshees and the unit walking in from reserves. Uh, I deep struck my uh, Raptor unit in the back here uh, for engage. So they came down in the back uh, behind this building. Mm -hmm. And these guys walked in his table edge because he didn't really have good targets to walk them in anywhere. So they walked in his table edge. That way he's able to come in within nine inches of my Raptors and just blow them off the table. Um, the other guys walked in over here on the bottom edge to kill as many demon nets as they could. He killed all but two, because they have a four of demon save. Uh, and then the Banshees wound up charging, killing the Master Possession pretty easily, uh, and then kind of just chilling out right here, stole the uh, the bottom objective. And then the Fiends ran back up, because he brought everybody on, on the table, so the Fiends can then run back up and get ready for the next uh, turn of charging. Mirror moved up, these guys advanced and did warp time finally. Uh, we were able to finish off the avatar with, um, I think the master, uh, or the disco Lord died. No, disco Lord ran over here. He's chilling. He ran over here to get the flamer shot off on this unit, uh, behind this building. And then all the characters are kind of just surrounding the avatar to try to try and take the avatar out. Um, flamers then murdered this, uh, little character right here. Master execution came in finally. 
and at the bottom we're basically just taking over the bottom table so <laughs> we he was rolling i forget what to save on one of his guys and he just kept rolling one at a time and, and got like a six i think he needed a five plus gets a six gets a six gets a six and he rolled five sixes in a row to leave one of his characters on like one wound or something uh it was like the best roll i've ever seen so this is at the end of my turn so we get the charge off on the banshees down here with the possessed they clear them off the table pretty easily um everybody else kind of waiting up top we kill that character we kill uh the uh avatar this guy's chilling up top the demon prince charged in took these guys off the objective they have the uh the lord of, of war so he fails his morale and fails running and stuff like that and then all he's left is really just these two units down here and this uh, walker unit on the back uh, corner here. So I was basically just trying to stop priming as much as po uh, possible and just get as many secondary points as possible towards the end of the game. So at this point, you can kind of just run away uh, from the Eldar. Yeah, because he's basically just moving up, trying to take over the, the primary points again. And this is the, the end of the game. So I think we called it after turn three or four. Uh, we finished off with 45 on primary. We had 8 and 8 going into turn uh, 4. 3 and 3 for tertiary. Long War we took, which was pretty reliable in this mission because he wants to be on those three objectives as much as possible. And we just had to keep trying to steal it or take it from him. So we have 15 for Long War, 15 for Banners. It's a pretty easy banner mission. Uh, and Engage, we got 15 because we basically, if you're in all four table quarters, you only have to be within three of each table quarter. So being able to get that turn one uh, was was really huge which the Nurglings did it. Uh, and then I think I deep struck the, oh, the Fiends. The Fiends moved up and charged. So they got they got in that corner, the Nurglings got in the other corner, and then we had the other two corners. So being able to get engaged on every single turn with the demons specifically, like demons in this list were just super fast. Uh, minus one leadership just helped out so much. Um, so we were able to get 100 on the max, or 90 really, because we don't count paint, 90 uh, on the last score. Then he got uh, for primary, he got 24 for primary. Uh, assassinate, he took uh, seven. Uh, behind enemy lines, he got three. And then scout the enemy, he only got two. So he was only able to do scout the enemy once because his rangers died. He needed everybody else to kind of do whatever. That was the first time he took scout. So he was testing it out. Didn't really work out for him. Uh, but I'm sure he learned what he should or should not take against uh, Chaos Space Marine next time. So behind enemy lines, he was able to, only able to get that um, vehicle behind enemy lines that one turn. He possibly could have got it two more turns, but the Banshees, um, he might have got it for Banshees, I'm not sure. I think the Banshees had to come out, kill the Master of Possession, which at that point he wasn't behind enemy lines, so he didn't get that extra three points. So that was the that was the end of the uh, Eldar, Del Eldari mission. Um, so let's get into the wrap-up part of the video. Okay, so what did, what did we learn from the RTT? We learned that Night Lords aren't as bad as most people think. Uh, they are fun to play. Uh, if you are the maniacal uh, liking people fail their morale tests, fun. Um, and I think the difference that I would make the list is the mirror uh, for the demons, I think wasn't really worth the 160 points, 140 points, I think it's 160. So you can try the Demon Prince, the character Demon Prince for 180 points. Um, I think I'll, I'll try that next time because then at least he's a beat stick. But the mirror is kind of a beat stick. Like it, it does get into combat and do it. I didn't really use it as a combat tool unless it was for that last or second game against the Chaos player. Uh, it has a shit ton of attacks, two up mortal wound save, two damage, all that stuff. So if I were to try the mirror again, I think I would use it more offensively rather than just a psyker. The other thing I would do is I would probably just bring a demonette for like 70 points, the HQ character. Um, that way I can at least have that one opportunity to, to do the minus one leadership spell. Uh, so that's probably what I would change. Or there's a couple other characters that you can be running uh, in it that aren't psychers. Like you have the, the bagpipe guy for Nurgle that can get rid of OPSEC. Like that's pretty cheeky. You can bring the one demonette uh, solitaire dude that has crazy powers on, on his uh, abilities. So I'll, I'll test around with the HQs for that. Uh, and also the, the fiends and the two squads of three were phenomenal. The demonettes were phenomenal. Uh, you could bring the corn guys if you really want to have like the two damage, but the one damage, all the attacks, and just having them for the minus one uh, leadership and the minus one combat attrition test was really why I was bringing them. They're, they're obsec, they can consolidate for one CP like six inches, like they're super fast. 
So yeah, um, that's what I would change with the demon nuts. The nerglings I would take out if you know the mission isn't going to be um, the one mission that you have the pregame thing where you don't get a CP. So if you know that mission isn't happening, you could take the nerglings out. That saves you 60 points. And what would I change about the Night Lords uh, thing? I, I like the Night Lords list. The only thing I would change is probably the uh, Warlord traits a little bit. Um, I'm still not sold on the Master of Executions. He he has the Fight Last ability, which I think is needed in the Night Lords, but he just doesn't uh, hit as hard as with him with Flames of Spite or the other you know traits you can put on him. Um, I think I'm going to make the demon prince more tankier. So I might take off the Nurgle relic and potentially put that on, who can I put that on? Maybe put it on the master of execution. So at least he can still have that. But if I put Lord of War, I might do him in Slanesh so that way he can, you can heal him, have a feeling of pain and give him the elixir. So that way he can take three wounds instead of just dying. Uh, that way, you still have the Lord of War Warlord trait. You still force people to roll two dice, drop the lowest, uh, and he's got the minus one leadership aura. So I think making him more tanky and almost unkillable for at least one to two turns would be what I'm going to change in the Night Lord. So I'll put that on the Demon Prince. I'll put, instead of the Consolidate three inches on the Disco Lord, I might give him something different. I might give him the No Obsec power instead of the Consolidate. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll give him the no obsec. I'll put the relic on the um, master of execution, and that'll still leave me with one CP to do the deep strike um, turn one. So that'll be the the change of this list. The other list I would definitely try is the terminators coming in turn one, so that way you can potentially shank one and then make a guy to make the charge easier. Um, and kind of use the two CP strats for no fallback. In the video that I made uh, yesterday, uh, you'll see the no, the no fallback was huge huge came up amazing against eldari so i'm definitely going to be testing out night loads a little bit more let me know what you guys think about the list let me know what you guys would tweak uh join the discord if you haven't already patreons if you guys do like the content definitely go support the channel and join the dirtbag nation on the patreons uh and also facebook so we're on facebook we're posting a lot of stuff on facebook so that way you guys can keep up with uh community what's coming up but mainly it's going to be on discord uh, if you guys are patreons you get for first access to everything so Guys, I really appreciate it. This was super fun to make. Uh, I love you know doing RTT and videos like this. So if you guys like this type of content, you gotta let me know in the comments or I won't know what to improve on or what to get better at. But guys, thanks. Thanks for clicking on the video. Hit subscribe and notification bell so these videos actually bubble for you guys. And we'll see you in uh, another video soon, hopefully Night Lords.